um, Tracy's going to talk to us about a dog pilot project at Bethel's. So hang on. And Ted, I'm just, we're just about to embark on this new little study out at Tihinga over the summer. Um, it sort of come about um, through some funding we got through the Waitakere Rangers Heritage Area Act, and we're working with um, Unitech to do this with. Uh, so we've um, kind of jumped the gun a bit on the responsible pet ownership plans, which is focusing on cats, and we're kind of moving on to dogs, but it's been a really commonly reported issue. So we've had it um, come to us through Tarada Maki, who have been doing the um, local area plan for Tehinga, Pebbles Beach, Port, a bit of Bingamia. Our um, very hard working dollar minders have been very concerned about dogs um, and a range of other sources. So um, one, of the, that's one of the reasons we picked Tehinga, but also it's a bit of a hot spot for um, our native birds. We've got a really good population of the grey faced petrels out there, oyster catchers, the dollarals, and penguins. Um, and there used to be spotted shags out there as well, and we, get, we did have some northern diving petrels. So it's, it's a great spot for them. It's also a great spot for walking a dog. Everyone loves going out to the beach, so it's become more and more popular. Um, you can see here some of the locations, those red spots are uh, petrol burrows and penguin burrows that we have there, and um, the yellows where we kind of find the um, doctorals and uh, oyster catchers hanging out. So this is one of our signs that we have out at the beach, and it sort of shows you where you can and can't walk your dog, or where you need to have your dog leashed and when. Uh, it matches pretty well with where those biodiversity values are, but it um, quite complicated, so I guess one of the things we want to find out is, is that one of the problems? Um, is that stopping people from doing the right thing? Is they just look at that sign and go, oh, too hard, keep going. So hopefully we'll find out. So <laughs> nip that one off the Facebook page. <laughs> but um, our daughter all minders out at Tehinga have been doing an amazing job, and over the last couple of um, Labour weekends, um, have been out there talking to people, um, letting them know about some of the what the birds are doing out there and what those rules are. And um, I think, and I've heard from a few people, that there's been a real increase in the sort of number of people actually leashing their dogs. So that's been really cool. So what we're looking to do with this study is we're going to um, do a little bit. We wanted to do some of that ambassador type work and really support the work that our rural minders are doing. Um, but also do a bit of survey to find out what's, what those drivers are and you know, what's, what's causing people to want to leash their dogs or not. Um, where are they getting information from, that sort of thing. So the, um, and the, the Unitech students will provide a friendly non-council sort of <laughs> face that might, people will hopefully want to talk to more. So it's going to be set up, it's going to go for six weeks over the summer from January, and we'll start out with having the um, students do a bit of observational work and just see what the what the um, what's the norm out there, uh, and then they'll do a couple of weeks of survey, um, followed up by some more observation. Um, once they've done the survey, they'll then go into talking to the people about what, what if, you know if they don't aren't aware of the rules, what the rules are, and talking to them about the birds and you know why why dogs are a problem, um, and what they can do to help. Um, and yeah, so the sort of questions we're looking at, you know, what, what do they know? Where are they getting that information? Um, what do they know about the native birds? And why might they not be following the rules? Trying to find out those things that we can then use to um, help solve the problem. So this was from a um, similar sort of study out at Harbourview on Anahina in the Gunnery Peninsula, where um, people were asked, um, do you change your dog walking behaviour when you visit sensitive wildlife areas like this one? Um, and 65% of the people said yes they did, uh, and they would change their behaviour to stay on the track or keep the dog on a leash. Right? But interestingly, one of the main reasons why they wouldn't change their behaviour is because they're local. So, 
Um, that's kind of an interesting one, and one I'd like to see if, if, it, if it's a, um, you know, is it more visitor or more locals, and what the attitudes are, and that then helps you target your, your information that you give out to your audience. Who is that audience? And um, so again, looking at uh, the, those reasons why people want to or wouldn't keep their dogs on a leash, um, a lot of why people take their dog for walk is obviously for exercise, and they want their dog to be able to run around and display that natural behaviour. So that's most of the reason why people don't want to keep their dog on a leash. They're not really that interested in what the bylaws are doing, whether they're allowed to or not. That's not a major consideration. Um, and then the reason why they might keep them on a leash is more for safety for other people, their dog, other dogs. And I think that came out quite strongly in our um, day the other day, a lot of people were commenting that it was quite good on a really busy day at the beach to have the dog on a leash. It's just a lot easier and um, everyone's a bit happier. So yeah, we've, once we've got that information, we can then start doing some of that real behavioural type work and um, looking at how we're going to target that message and, um, and really hope that we get a real continued improvement and um, be able to roll that out through other Waitakere Rangers beaches because it's a problem throughout the region even. So um, hopefully we get some really good data and can get some good work with it. <laughs> That's a great image, that top right one that shows the birds and the dogs. <laughs> I happen to be out at the beach one day for some other reasons, stalking the birds. <laughs> Particularly being a New Zealand top. <laughs> so there wasn't much concern, a very small segment of dog workers were concerned about bylaw enforcement. Yeah, yeah, because often we, I mean, we do have, um, I guess, that perception that, oh, you know, no one's out there p policing it, so that's why all the dog owners aren't doing it. But um, I think a lot of other studies have shown that, that that's not really a major factor. But that's why that's kind of tied up to it because they're not concerned because they know they're not going to. Yeah, there will be no compliance. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. That but yeah, yeah, like potentially. I mean, if it, but you could put a lot of resource into making that happen. Um, and then, yeah, maybe that would change things. I don't know. This is where Catherine's good at these, knowing these sorts of things, whether it's more of a, um, it's, it becomes the norm. And if I think a lot of people take their cues from what other people are doing. So if they go onto the beach and everyone else's dog is on a leash, they're much more likely to put their dog on a leash, regardless of what the consequences are either way. So, um, it's well, surely if you get one or two fights and three enforcement cases, the word might get around. It might do, but then again, if it's mostly visitors who aren't locals, you know, they it won't. Well, that's what you're saying. It's locals. Well, it <laughs> might be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you want you do want yeah. the locals to have that ownership of the beach and that yeah. and that feeling that they can go and talk to other people about yeah. it as well. Yeah. E Yvonne, um, I, I did a survey of visitor numbers visiting the Cascades once, and while I was out there, this lady came over to try and get a dog. So awesome, I said, excuse me, lady, you should have that dog on the leash. Oh, he doesn't chase him, and he doesn't do anything like that. Yeah. He's a good boy, I've got him to come boy. down and a dog. But it, it's just that mindset of people, and it was also people that said they I moved into Waitakere so I my dog can walk in the bush and do what he wants, you know, that, that's my attitude. Yeah. It was really enlightening that, you know, the, the way that people have got that mindset about their dog and what they can do and things, and, and it, I think it's really hard to change that because a lot of dogs are really important to a lot of people in health-wise and yeah. friendship and things like that, mm -hmm. but it's really a hard line to get past yeah. and you know we can say that we don't want dogs and things like that but it, it's really really hard to get around yeah. that and I really don't know how you can get around that mm -hmm. in the long term. Yeah. Some support with enforcement would be good. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. It's not to say it's not part yeah. of it but it, yeah. it might not be you know even if you did that it might not solve the problem. I, I was at Whatapu once mm. and there were dotterals there and someone had their little dog race, you know, off lead, racing around, 
And I was, I was horrified. And I did say, look, could you please put your dog on a lead? Um, you know, it's not, a, not, it's actually not supposed to be out yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, could you at least put it on yeah. a lead? Because there's dotteral birds over there nesting yeah. over there. And they were like, oh, it's just a little bird, won't be interested. And so I would love it if mm. council could, or whoever, could actually start talking about, it's not necessarily that they're even going for the birds, yeah. it's actually that they're freaking them out. Yes. And yeah. um, so I think there's some messaging in there. You've got to be careful about being upfront with pets too, because you yeah. can get aggressive reaction. Mm. Yeah. And I think yeah. That's Absolutely. One of the reasons why the rangers don't want to do it. Yeah. Because of that same thing, they don't want the confrontation, they don't want that to be part of it. Yeah, but they don't and have it should be a dog control thing. Yeah, but they don't yeah. have that role in Vaughan, they're not given no. the power to find. No, yes, right, yeah. that's crazy. So that, yeah. I mean, the dog, dog management have said that they will put on additional people to come out to the Bethels and um, Piha over the summer. So but that's but summer to do that and yes. um, uh, the same time as the dotteral minders mm. are there and, and not actually find people but just but give them a warning them. in yeah. the yeah. first yeah. instance yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps the brochure that the dotteral people have got. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Actually you can explain it from paper would be quite helpful. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Way, this is not for the majority of dog owners, it's for the intractable yeah. ones. It yeah. only yeah. takes one dog to ruin a whole Yes. Yeah. Look, I was just aware that that gentleman wanted to ask a question. No, I don't know you're up to. I was just oh, cool. surprised that there wasn't any response because they were ever for 10 years, so it has to be the ranger. Oh, yeah. So I just think it was still going on. They, they, they're definitely out there. I think it's just, I mean, out. Not on the weekend. Yeah, not, not enough. It's, it's, they've got a big area to cover, so, you it's know. Just some patrol is a bit more frequent on the uh, I think that um, with the, the doctoral minders being out there on the weekend and doing that education, yeah. um, I think the people were very compliant because now they knew the reason mm. that we were asking yeah. them to do that. And then I think if there was that ranger on the beach just as a backup for the one or two people that decided to let their dogs off anyway, um, I thought it was quite positive because the messaging was about it wasn't about you must have your dog on a lead, it was about we're actually protecting this bird that's rarer than a kiwi. Mm -hmm. And when people knew that, they were quite happy to jump on board. I was at Stew Island recently and they do um, training for dogs to yep. stay away from kiwis. Yep. Whatever that is, the possible area. Yeah, yeah um, I don't know if there's any uh, like dog <laughs> aversion <laughs> training, but yeah. you probably could do it. Yeah. Sure yeah. Can I just say, so um, in terms of the RPMP, I think dogs as a vet to Makari dieback has been really undervalued. Mm -hmm. And actually, council does have a role with enforcement in places like Karamatura, which when you look at the Kauri dieback map, it's very clear that dogs have been a vet to Makari mm -hmm. and along the Pika track. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of how we some of the funding for the dog control now. So that doesn't come up by Uh, I couldn't quite have any map before, but O'Neill's, uh, is that totally Yeah, that's dog-free, dog free. yeah. Um, Cause, cause I, that's a common like a place for dogs to be. There's a sign that says, no dogs, please, but mm. having, a, yes. having a sign that yep. yes. people psychologically have to walk past a big council sign that says no dogs, yeah. might get some people. Yes. Actually having the same signage, but not necessarily no dogs, but, mm. but some attractive signage that is quite clear that no matter where it is, it's the same sign, don't bring dogs yeah. in. One mm -hmm. of the things we did yeah. want to do was originally for this was to do some signage type trials as well, Good but idea. we just Good don't idea. have the, um, the funding or the capacity in this season to kind of do that, so it's thinking maybe maybe the next time we'll do that and see um, if that particular intervention is more successful than say the ambassadors, so we're hoping that we'll be able to see whether that having people on the beach lasts beyond just having the people on the beach, so we will we'll keep those observations going, but um, you know, you've got, to, you've got to have time and money to, to test all the different things. The problem is that there's all PL and Murawai where mm. you have different ones at different, different parts of the area. Yes, it gets really complicated, like with that, um, 
you've got yeah. different times of year, you've got different times of day, you've got some places you're allowed the dog, but it has to be on a leash, and other places off leash, and yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. hard to make it work for everyone. Uh, so there's, there is a single reason for out there now, pre amalgamation, we still feel a dog for the wards at every city and regional parks, and we have other for as well. Yeah. But we seem to be able to manage it. Is it just one lot that struggles, or is it a bus where you just can't join everybody? Yeah, we still have some boundary issues, I guess, in terms of the, um, the local uh, parks versus regional parks are managed quite differently. So they ran a um, dog bylaw kind of review on all the local parks last year. But um, I'm not sure about the regional parks as well. Yeah, it, 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 that does can, can cause problems where, like at Piha, especially where there's regional parks, local parks, and then dock land as well. So um, it's hard to get that coordination still to a certain extent. It's a little, probably a little bit easier than it was. Cool. Thank you, Tracy.